we're going to go through and do some introductions and some icebreakers so that we're all aware as to who's around because I know that changes what you say or how you say it sometimes so we're going to do that then we're going to go through some some feedback about what happens when you upload so we want to talk about when you upload something what sort of feedback you expect from the system um, then we're going to talk about NUPTIG um, because we need to also consider NUPTIG as well as NAPTAN. So just trying to get your thoughts on NUPTIG, whether you like it, whether you don't, whether it's useful, whether it drives you mad, what's its little idiosyncrasies, what are the things that we need to be aware of. Um, then we're going to have a little chat about business rules. Now we've grouped them together. So we're going to talk about how they're grouped and have a look at what those groups mean. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what's coming up um, and then we're going to talk about who to contact and all of those things. So hopefully everybody's now able to see the introductions and icebreakers part of this mural. Is there anybody who's having problems accessing the mural board? Fantastic. So what we're going to move on to is a little bit of an exercise. Um, and I wanted to ask about feedback. Now this is feedback when you've uploaded your your data to NAPTAN, there is feedback that you get about whether it matches, um, whether it geo matches, whether there's some clashes in the XML, whether there's some, some clashes across the system. And what I wanted you to do is think about and put in stickies, and I'll give you about five minutes to do this. Think about what feedback you get now what feedback you'd like to get and then we'll put it into one of these four quadrants and I'll just reduce the size so you can we can see the four quadrants so put in on the vertical the stuff that you need the stuff that you have to have the stuff that make makes every little bit of difference to your day put that at the top and the stuff that's okay to have put that at the bottom and then the stuff that you need instantaneously, like the moment I've uploaded, I, I really need to know this or I'd like to know this, put that on the left. And the stuff that you can wait a couple of days for to find out, put that on the right. Does this make sense to everybody? So we're going to put these up and then we're going to do a little bit of grouping and a little bit of voting and just see what is most important. We're going to talk through them for a bit. So I'm going to put a little timer on and give us all about um, – Five minutes to do this and we'll see we'll see how people go is this making sense now somebody's got their hand raised just let me run back in mark yeah how do you create this sticky um if you off on the left hand side if you follow me you'll see there's a little the second thing down has a um has a text thing and you can pop out and you can put a little sticky note right Okay. And I've just put I've just put one on there there for you, so you yep. can just copy what's on there if you if you can't find it. Okay. Is that is everyone yes, okay with that? Right. Uh, I forgot to do oh, one hi, thing. This is, Hang sorry, on. sorry to interrupt. Yeah, this is just Sindhu here. Um, I think I've missed the link to the mural. Is is there any way I could get it, please? Uh, we sent it uh, because there's no chat on here. Um, uh -huh. We sent it out via email. Uh, so it would be one of the emails that you got from Tim this morning has oh, the link on the mural. For I'll you. take a look. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for that. Yeah. If there's any trouble, um, uh -huh. just put your hand up and we can talk through it. All right. Don't worry. I've got it here. Thank you very much. Uh, fantastic. Right. So I'm going to start the timer. And, and so we want the stuff you really need at the top, the stuff that's okay to have at the bottom, and then s separate it sideways. On the left, the stuff that you need instantly, and on the right, the stuff that you need a little bit later. You can wait for a bit. Have fun with the stickies. Mark, is, is that your hand up or is that a legacy it is, hand? It is, as is traditional in these sessions, I'm having difficulty because it won't connect to this... Um, this mural. Um, mural, thank you. Um, I don't know why. Um, it just is trying to reconnect. Now, okay. I, I, don't, I don't think it's my connection. Obviously, I'm talking to you, okay, so I don't know what's... I think it must be my uh, fingers my fingers or something. But looking at what's up there, a lot of what is what I would have said, like, 
instantaneous knowing it's successful has been covered so I don't think I need to put anything on there okay so what we'll do when I've just we got go unmagic through, fingers you know <laughs> that's so not a problem um what we'll do is 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 when we go through and talk through what's up there, um, if you see anything that you think is missed, just let me know or just call it out with your hand up and yeah. we'll um, we'll add it. It's totally okay. I'll take it off. Thank you. Cool. We've got about 10 seconds left. There'll be a little ding dong in everyone's ears in a moment. It's that very airplane sound, which is one of the one of the modes of transport I didn't ask about. So, has everyone had a chance to put their stuff up apart from Mark? Um, and we'll go through and see what we can join together, and and if there's any comments or things that people wish to add. So, um, it, we've got one. It would be good to get an acknowledgement that the upload has been successful. You don't currently receive one. So is this telling you that we've, when you say successful, is this I've received the file or I've received and checked the file? What does successful mean? You can spot I'm a BA. Can somebody just kind of let me know what this means? Hi, it was my comment. It's Di here. Um, it was that they've received it and it's, basically being looked at you don't get anything other than okay you know nothing really other than it goes cool. off the blank box again that's fine it's just it's just helping us it's helping me totally understand what successful is um and we've got known another one that uploads been successful ian you've got a comment yeah, just querying if um, there's more than one way to upload the Naptown data, so it might be handy to if somebody's putting comments on as to say how they're doing it. Are they doing it through the FT, just through an FTP provider? I use FileZilla to get it, uh, put it up, or are they talking about directly through the the DFT or Naptown website? Because we, we okay. certainly get an acknowledgement to say it's been received, and they also get an update to say whether it's passed successfully with uh, without error. So. That's good to know, Ian. So, so you get, so you're uploading via FTP, and you're getting both. And die, I take it you're uploading via the website and getting neither. Is that correct? That's correct. And we want you to essentially both have the same experience. Uh, John, you've got a a comment. Yeah, just to say, I'm uploading via the website, and I'm getting acknowledgement. Okay. That's good to know. Um, we're going you to look they have at acknowledgements up on the website though, on the portal, and add as many people to remove people as you want. I get an acknowledgement, but it goes in my junk folder. Okay, so so we, the acknowledgement currently is via email. Um, so one of the questions that we're possibly going to look at with user research is what other sort of acknowledgements are useful and where and when should they show for you? So should you be able to just quickly see this on the screen or or should you wait for the email? So we we want to do some testing. So Ian, is your hand up for another question or is this a legacy hand? It's a legacy hand. Right, let me just... So we've run through that. Um, feedback about any errors. When we're talking about errors, uh, you currently isn't available and you have to check the Eto world a few days after the upload. Or when we're talking about errors, this is a bit like understanding successful. Um, is this errors for the schema or is this, or is this the kind of business rule type errors? Because we're going to get onto business rules in a little bit. I just wanted to understand what we mean by errors here, if somebody can let me know. Can somebody, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Tricia, thought, sorry. Yeah, um, for errors for me, it's the, um, the rule errors. So sometimes you might um, have put the wrong direction indicator or, uh, you know, you know, or 
um, there might be something where you've got duplication of common names across a certain locality that you hadn't picked up before you sent the export. Cool. Thank you for that. I've just made a little note to put it there. Um, wrong local area. Um, we've got one over here, which is we need, but it can take a little bit of time as feedback on conflicts. Quick feedback, but back on errors. Ah, what's the difference between a conflict and an error? Could somebody just kind of help me out here with this one? Hello, it's Michael. Um, well, I'm thinking that um, you've got the actual data in there, which is not breaking any rules in terms of um, it's the right sort of numeracy and all that sort of stuff. But there could be situations where there's already a stop at that, that location um, and that would be a conflict. How can you have a, you know, if, if it's not, and it's not the same sort of information, it's not like an update, it's like a duplication. Um, I think that's what I'm referring to. Okay, that makes that makes sense and that 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 really helps me understand. Um, yeah. So we've got, thank you for that. So then we've got quick feedback on errors, website acknowledgement of upload, ours just goes into the junk folder. Um, confirmation that upload was successful. I'm seeing a theme here about this this confirmation. Instant feedback from the file validation tool before upload attempt and explanation as to what the errors are. So does this mean that you're using the that that validation tool to check your file before you go and do the upload? Just wanting to understand the the journey here and make sure that I've got it inside of my head. Or uh, we can, we'll come back to this one. Um, the current situation is I upload to NAPTAN via the interface. No feedback was received at all. When I have time a few days later, I might look at ETO to see if any errors have been highlighted. Then if I have time, I might look at some of them. My software creates a data set. It's a basic criteria, so additional verification at point of upload is not strictly necessary. So this is saying that your XML is fine and it's all the extra business rules that need checking. Um, and getting uh, feedback to say, hey, I've, I've received your upload and it's past the XML. Your XML has an accidentally corrupted or something like that. That's the instantaneous need. And then there's some later needs around the business rules. Does that make sense to, to and is that kind of everyone's thinking on that? Sounds sensible to me. Just making sure that I've kind of summarized what's there. And then in some of the things that can wait a little bit of time is changes to rules or new fields, um, naming convention feedback. So is this around the length of common names or whether you've put St. Ives Street with two STs in it um, in there and things like this? That's the sort of thing, yeah, yeah. And then data improvements, Ito, is this, when you say data improvements, is this making sure that stuff is in the right areas, that you don't have all your bus stops, um, all your bus stops at the bus station are within the right stop area and things like this? You can see I'm getting more to grips with NAPTAN and how it's put together. Um, I was my comment on there was more to do with the fact that if they decide there's a, uh, they might need to have uh, a more meaningful column or an extra bit of information or we get some new feature that would be useful to have at a stop I don't know like some sort of it's got um, CCTV on it or something of that nature you know that was what, what I was thinking about the things that can wait longer and that uh, might be useful to have something told to us. That sounds that sounds really good. Um, does anyone else before we move along, is there anything else about feedback that anyone wants to talk about? So just to summarize to make sure that I've got it so that we've all got it, the instantaneous 
feedback of yes, I've got your file and it's passed XM and the XML is a OK is one of the big things that people need. And then the business rules stuff can can happen on a little bit of a little bit longer time scale. Is that pretty much everyone's thinking or is there something else that I've as the nuances that I've missed in there? Um, I would say that it sounds a bit generic of what you're calling the business rules, because once you've made your XML file from whatever system you're using, you're assuming it's valid XML and valid business rules. When you upload it to the DFT, yes, you want acknowledgement that you've got the file, that, that you're validating it against the XML and those business rules there, and then obviously that it will be uploaded. What mm -hmm. you would get in the future might be then more detailed checks, what ITL, ITL will currently do, for instance, your bearings wrong or so forth. But when you first upload it, I would assume that you are validating the DFT against the XML and the business rules, which is in there, because you don't want to put something up that's wrong. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, there's, it, it, so there's, when, when you're saying these two things, that they're big in scope, so it's no... Yeah. There's almost two types of... Yeah, um, and I think the vagueness will come out a little bit more when we tackle the business rules. There's two types of rules that that are in the system. So one is rules that are within the XML file. So you can't put some fields, you can't put particular fields into the XML because the XML checks there and says, no, you can only have these, these types of values in. Then there's some rules that are around um, We've called them business rules and they're around some other things and we're going to get onto those. In fact, I might just shuffle things around. I'll go to the business rules and then we'll talk about nub tick. So I'll just try to move my business. There we are. We'll go to business rules next and then we'll go to nub tick because I think that's going to make a little bit more sense for everybody. So business rules. Well, what we've done is we went through everything that we could find that gave a business rule. So this is Sarah Brown's work. She's she's done some amazing work here. Sarah and the rest of the BA team have gone through every single bit of documentation that we can find and listed out every single business rule that we could find. So these are the rules around localities, common names, indicators, the SMS code, et cetera. Now, we're trying to figure out of these 131 rules, which are the most valuable rules to people. And why do we want to know that? Because we want to start working on putting these rules in, but we want to work from the most valuable rules. We want to provide the most business value with the first bits of work that we do. We don't want to put a rule in that nobody really cares about. We don't want to put rules in that um, don't actually really make sense anymore. We want to put in the best business rules that are going to deliver that gold standard NAPTAN data. So that's what we're trying to do. So what we've done is we've gone through and grouped the business rules in various ways, and we've got 12 groupings. Now, these 12 groupings, I would like this group, this is gonna be an interesting exercise in coordination. I would like this group to line up those business rules. There's 12 stickies, so I want, as a group, as to try to line up those 12 stickies with the least useful business rules on the left and the most useful business rules on the right. And then when we've got disagreements, we're going to talk about and move them across. Now, how we've grouped these business rules, we've got common name, we've got um, locality with identical stops, we've got stop area inaccuracies, we've got bus stop types, We've got indicators, location, none bus stop types, stop area status archiving, business rules, locality, stuff around SMS, acto admin areas, and stop point types. Now, is there any of those groupings that anyone's like, oh, I don't quite get what those are about? Fantastic. So we're going to have what I'd like to call five minutes of absolute chaos and, cha and more chaos. I would like us to pick up 
somebody to pick up a uh, one of these 12 points and put them where they think it's going to be. And then we'll just try to line all those 12 up across from the most with the most useful on the right and the least useful on the left. So wh whoever has an opinion, your opinion being first will be the first one. And I want them, we're going to try to force rank them so you can't have two in the same place. Mark, what? which business rule would you like me to move? Well, I don't. I just want to you know what, what do you mean by location? What does location mean and where's street? Uh, Sarah, just can you just help me out? Location was around where the bus stop is located on the street. So I'm not used to the word location in 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 Naptan terms. It's 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 not not used. So to my knowledge. Yeah, location actually describes a group of fields around the geo code. Maybe we could have called it geo code. So there was a problem with the geo code where for some reason we think that that geo code isn't right. Well, it would help if you're talking to people who deal with Naptan fields that you you do use the 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 terms that they're going to be familiar with. Otherwise, you get me asking silly questions like I'm doing now. Is geo That's okay, Mark. Is geocode okay. a more familiar term for you? Well, yeah, we had to put the easting and northing in, or or um, what's the other one? Longitude and latitude. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yes. so what I've done, Mark, is I've just updated that one with with geocode on it. Cool. So let's try. Can, yeah. can I just ask a question, a background question? Certainly. Are, are you trying to are you trying to sort of derive an equivalent set of I think tests, the answer is yes. tests to what ITO is are, are currently currently offering? Is that is that your intention? But from from scratch. Um, what we want to do is, yeah, what we don't want to do exactly what ITO is doing. No. We want to start off with. From looking the, at how we can, how we can do the best feedback mm. for people who are uploading stuff. So if we can give you instant feedback around that the upload has happened and then very fast feedback to say, and actually we've received this file and it's done well, but there's this error that you might want to go check on this business rule, that's going to be far more useful than asking you to wait a couple of days or a week and then go check something like Eto World. We're trying to figure out what's the best way of doing something like that. Okay, so these, and, are, these are for instantaneous testing rather yeah, than and, let's go away and compare like a street name with another mapping system. Yep, so, so um, it's the instantaneous yeah. things that you're looking at here. That's that's what we're starting to look at, but we'll, we will do some user testing with somebody like yourself to go, is this useful? Is what we're is what we're looking at doing going to be useful to you? Or have we kind of not got it quite right and you can give us some feedback on it? And that's what a lot of these public meetings are about, is trying to understand what's going to be most useful. So should this, is this include the, the mandatory requirements, basically, for each stop type? Would that not be... Something the, to go for. the mandatory requirements for each stop type are held in the XML as far as I believe, but Sarah, I'm looking at Sarah for nods because I'm, yeah, Sarah, yeah, that's 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 held within the XML. You can't put something in that that fails the XML validation. So these are the rules on top of that XML layer. So we've got some things, but I see there's some things that are vertically in the same space. So what I'd like to do is to get this as a single line row. So I want to find out, for example, between geocode and acto admin area, which one is the most important? Now we can do it in a number of ways. You can move them and fight over it, or we can do a vote system, or whoever was that was that masked. Um, lobster can just move it and everyone agrees so i we're trying to get everything in a single row across ah i see the actor areas come back 
Okay, so is this, does everyone agree with this? Because I... I will leave that alone. I was just trying to line things up so that I could read them. So is this making sense to everybody? Is Di, you wish to talk? Sorry, I didn't spot you for a second there. Um, right, sorry, I, I didn't understand what your line was uh, referring to, but I do now. So the unique things with a bus stop is the, it's, it's, it's the full ACCO code, not just the admin area, the full ACCO code, which is the admin area, and then whatever the bus stop unique reference is. Mm -hmm. So to me, that is the thing that ultimately identifies what that stop is. Um, and then the thing after that is obviously the location. I would possibly put the uh, common name after that, which is a confirmation that you are actually talking about or referring to the stop that you, you think you're referring to. It's just confirmation um, and the indicator with that as well. But I think around the country, not everybody uses these the same way. For example, we on our bus stop flags, we will have the bus stop common name and the indicator on the flag. And the SMS code is in the uh, roadside publicity. I don't actually think the SMS code is that useful. I don't know that that many people use them these days, but it's still there. And it's also another unique reference. So I've lost the point I'm trying to make, but it's you've just got to be careful about at what level you can identify which actual stuff you're talking about before you actually start getting rid of stuff or or pairing stuff down I think yeah and, and so, people do things differently and we and we know that common name and a lot of the name fields are used differently around the country and that's one of the things where I think we want to understand what why that is but 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 also understand um how we can kind of help get help use all have, have the rules to make sense of the common names because we know for example that there are some false positives that come through from some of the tests around common names that people are consistently suppressing and I've I've gone through and done a little bit of looking around the data, and there are some problems with common names. For example, um, Tottenham Court Road, Great Russell Street stop, which is one of the stops that I usually go to. I know exactly where that is, and it's on the corner of those two roads, um, or it's it's Tottenham Court Road's area for Tottenham Court Road Station, but it's the Great Russell Street stop. So there's a um, its name is correct, and yet it constantly flags up warnings on a lot of the common name problem a lot of the common name business rules because of having road and street etc mm -hmm. um so it's it's understanding are some of those rules really useful or are they just creating extra work for everybody and what does and when people are saying there's a lot of bad data in here what does that actually mean because if we're using rules that are making lots of false positives then your data isn't bad the rules are yeah i agree with that yeah and that's and that's so 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 that's what i'm trying to understand here but i'm also trying to understand what are the most valuable rules to look at because it's no use looking at some of these business rules if they're not actually that useful to people um so, Mark, you 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 had a question. Oh, sorry, me again. I just I just my the, uh, the the wall socket was was not switched on, so my computer went down. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask a question, and I apologise if it's been asked before. What does stop area inaccuracy mean? Um, on the Sarah, sticky yeah. sticky label. So. <clears throat> The most likely error in that category is around the stop area type, not matching the stop point type. Stop it. So stop areas are typed. Um, yeah. Whether yeah. Etc. Um, and the stop 
the stop is typed as well. And when there's a mismatch between those two types, then stop area inaccuracy, inaccuracies are reported. Mm -hmm. So it's not the way so, the, in which you formed the stop area. It's not that sort of problem, which is going to cause problems potentially with journey planners. It's like having a stop area relating to rail as opposed to buses. Is that what you're, is that what you're yes. worried about? Yes. And they're, the, they're um, rules that we know of that have, we found documented. Right. Can I, can I ask another silly question? I mean, a lot of there emphasis. There are no silly questions, Mark. A lot of, a lot of emphasis has been put on the accuracy side of the, the street that we've used, which uh, doesn't appear on here, um, as opposed to um, some reference that the tester is using. For example, open street map. Why, why isn't street on there? I'm not trying to pick holes, by the way. I'm trying to oh. get my head around this. Yeah, no, I think if street should be on there. I think that's a really good call. And Sarah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll let you go. No, These seem okay. to be very selective little bits of Naptan. Again, I'm not trying to be critical because I'm, I'm, I'm used to working with Itto and 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 you know dealing with the tests that that are provided on that thing but yeah this is very coarse grained we've um looked at all the business rules yeah. and grouped them into these categories so they are very broad categories did, did you not think of looking at the ito tests and wondering working up that way wondering which were the most relevant and which weren't or have well, you just sort of like pushed them to one side and thought no, that's no, horribly confusing um, the Ito world ones are all incorporated into these categories. So these categories represent a combination of. Because uh, it's not apparent to me that honestly it's not. I mean, I must be being a bit thick here, but it, it's a you're on a level above me. Yeah, I think what we've done, Mark, um, sorry, Sarah, because what we what we did was we found every bit of documentation across all the DFT sites across all of our internal work and also from Eto World of every single business rule that that is applied to measure the accuracy of the data because we're con constantly being told by people like BODs and everybody that there's four percent errors within the bus. Well, we know we get we get the, the bus criticism. Data. Yeah, we know it. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to understand mm. what that means because from a lot of your comments previously and from looking at a lot of the Eto world errors, there's a lot of suppression of errors. There's a lot of saying, actually, this isn't an error. Let's just, let's suppress it. And we know this happens for a lot of people. So we were trying to understand what are the really, really important business rules to start looking at. Yes. Because we want to include some of those very important business rules in our in our process. We want to make sure that we only but we want to bring across only the ones that are really valid that provide value. So Peter, yeah. I know that I, I, I know that you will have thoughts and I really like to hear them. So if you if you'd like to speak up that would be great. Okay, well, just just to defend your exclusion of street, I think one of the arguments could be that, uh, in fact, street was something that was a field that was used particularly in the uh, transport direct uh, um, model, and it quite often doesn't appear in journey planners today. However, and and to support Mark. Um, um, in fact, in the in the Eto world tests, we do actually make a lot of use of street because it becomes rather rather a pivotal point to um, try and clarify some of the other tests. So if you if you establish which street it is on, perhaps some of the other tests fall into place. So um, it is a it is still in the NAPTAN database and it's potentially a very useful one, um, but it may not be one that actually appears in in public facing systems in the end. But it's useful along the way as a as a as a determinant of whether you're you've actually located the stop on the right street. So if you if you're at a junction, um, and uh, and there's doubt whether which road the stop is actually on, it's a very useful field to know. Absolutely, and I, I've I've put it with locality because I think those are the two that we joined together, Sarah, from memory. But I don't know these rules as well as you do. No, it and it's okay. I'm not going to. Location and street were joined together. 
So uh, putting putting those two together is is correct. No, put it with location or geocode. Ah, uh, code. Right there we are. Perfect. Don't want to switch to sketch. There we are. So um, location, geocode, and street. Keith, you've got some thoughts, and I'd really like to hear them. My my only question is, could you share your 131 business rules that you found and indicate where they are currently actually tested in the current system, whether it's the DFT side or whether it's ITO world? That actually we're use more than to do the tests. We're more than happy to do that because it's all publicly available. Um, because we've taken all the publicly available data. Um, I will ask Adrian to help us organise this and we'll send this out afterwards. OK, because it's on a spreadsheet, then even people from this group can actually check from their logic and, and feedback if it's on a Google shared spreadsheet or something like that. Then yeah. People can actually uh, make comments which will aid your analysis potentially. That would be that would be great, and um, we've currently got it in a uh, in a Excel spreadsheet. But we'll have a look at how we share that out so that as many people can comment as possible. Um, is there any other thoughts on business? I'm just aware of the time. We've got about half an hour left, and I want to get on to Nubtig um, because um, not that we don't care about it. But we do have to care about it because we know that you all have to do stuff with NubTig. So um, in trying to understand it, I've taken a screenshot of the area where I live, um, which is called Southwark. But there's a space inside Southwark called Southwark. There's a space inside Southwark called Elephant and Castle. And there's a space inside Elephant and Castle called Chaucer Ward um, or called Chaucer. So there's these really are trying to understand what these localities mean and their locations. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like to give you five minutes to put on stickies your thoughts and experiences of NubTig. Do you update it often? Is it something that you have to tweak a lot? Is it something that makes sense? Is it something that causes you grief? We're just trying to understand. We know that NubTig and NAPTAN are really closely interlinked. And a lot of NAPTAN data is built on NubTig. You can't have a bus stop without a NubTig ref reference. But we just need to understand how often you're updating it and what your experience of updating it is like. Um, so if you, I'm going to put a little timer on and give you five minutes to have a look at that. And then just let me know kind of we'll talk through it and get and get a sense feel free just to vent about nubtig as well tell us what you hate about it tell us um if you love it if it's the best part of your job um and and anything like that because that's going to be really really useful to us because we're also our alpha was looking at some technical pieces this as we're moving on past those technical pieces we need to do some research and we need to have a look at how we include nubtig and in what we're doing so i'm just going to put a timer on for five minutes and i'll stop sharing my screen and i'll start off with 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 that so we've got have been updating nice to know i'm unsure of the level of nesting that is possible safe and that's really good to know because I know that there's rules around the nesting and around the hierarchy around parents and children and grandchildren and how many children somebody can have and things like that. And I think it's it seems to be used slightly differently in a couple of different places. So it's really good to understand what that is. And maybe we have an open discussion. Um, we might need to have a little nub tig focus session, perhaps. Um, OK, makes perfect sense when used in comb combination with bus stop lists. So, so when you've got a list of bus stops and you're using the GAS um, NAPTAN or NUBTIG, so you've got a list of your bus stops and NUBTIG, you can kind of put them together. Is that what you're saying? And they make sense, but they don't make sense. It doesn't make sense in isolation. Is that... No. I'm not saying they don't make sense in isolation. I'm just saying that you can see how useful the um, localities are when they're used in combination with the bus stop name going through right. the list. Because you can okay. see where the where the bus will take you. 
Right, right. So, so the thing that I'm understanding from this, um, and maybe I should have been a little bit clearer in my understanding, um, there's a whole pile of little villages which all have high street um, uh, in, in them, and there's a whole pile of places around London that have a place called London Road and things like that. So having a bus stop called London Road, you're not going to know which London, which of the 150 London roads you're choosing from, and you need the NubTig locality to know that you're going to Chesham and you want London Road in Chesham. So I was trying to think of a small, smaller place that's outside London. So if you're trying to go to Chesham and you want to go to the High Street in Chesham, you'll want to choose Chesham <clears throat> as the locality. And then you've got the bus stop which will be High Street. And if I was an Amersham, <clears throat> that's only a couple of miles away, but it's also got a High Street bus stop. So NubTig helps tell those two apart, even though they're going to have the same name. Is, is, is that, have I got that right? Yeah, that's how it works. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that I understood it well enough. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, here we go. I really update Oh, Mark, get your thoughts before I move on to the long one. You're on mute, Mark. I was on mute, yes. Well spotted, <laughs> thank you. Although, obviously, it standardises on naming convention as well. Say you've only got one Chesham. I know that's a trivial example, but you've only got one representation to work with mm -hmm. when you're naming your bus stop. So that makes sense to have a gazetteer. Yep. So 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 you only have one of anything. Yeah. Of yeah. I'll EG shut up now. One Chesham. Please don't, because your your input is very valuable. Uh, Ian. Thanks. Yeah. One thing I think I said it on the last meeting as well. If they were going to do some development with Nupsig, it would be really handy if it was you had a GIS version, so you could see all the different Nupsigs areas, localities that you've got, and then you could see where the stops are on the border, whether they should be in one or the other. And if you're creating a new uptake, whether you, where you would geographically put it, that would be immense help. It used to be one years ago, but that went the way of the world. But if there's going to be a development, uh, for me, I would go for that. So when you say a GIS version, what do you mean? Yes. So you can click on... You mean like a mappy version? A mapping version. You, you click on this on an area and it'll tell you what nuptig that's in and it'll show you the, the boundaries of the nuptig so you can see where they uh, overlap because what used to happen, they used to have a mapping version and you could say, click on a, a locality and it'd show you all the stops and you'd realize then that you've got some stops which are a long way away and probably should be in a different locality. So you can do right. it. It would be a, a tidying up version that you could do. Ah, so that makes sense. So, so if you would, so just use my Chesham example. If you'd accidentally put an Amersham bus stop and linked it to Chesham, you wouldn't know until you did a test, until you looked at something like this, that that you've got a bus stop that's three miles away. Yes. Yeah. That's that's really good to understand. Okay, Mark, very quickly, and then I'll go through these ones, and then we've got about two more things to wrap up in the last 10 minutes or so. I was just going to back Ian's comment up. I mean, you build up the shape of a locality from its locality center. That's all you've got in the UMTIG, UMTIG, whatever. But you build it up from the bus stops that have been allocated to that particular locality. You can build a border and then do comparisons of um, incorrectly allocated um, localities that way that Ian was saying. But visualizing it is very important. That's that's really good to understand. Um, and I also got some of the examples and some of the ideas um, from from the system, because when you want to get to Chesham, you want to get to the centre of Chesham. Usually you don't want to get to the outskirts of Chesham because it's about a mile walk or more. So knowing where the centre is, is 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 really important, because otherwise you could just end up dropped somewhere, hopping off the wrong bus stop if you don't know where you are. Chris, you've got a question or a comment. Yeah, I'm just saying the Ito version of the map, the mapping of the locality seems to work quite well for me. Although it's a shame that you have to go into a separate um, 
um, a program to actually do the mapping, but it, it certainly works quite well, um, I, I believe, unless I'm missing something. Cool, that's that's really good to understand as well. Uh, Graham. Uh, yes, just, just on the NUPTIG uh, stuff, just one observation, I think it's still valid that between NUPTIG and NAPTAN, if um, when you've got a boundary, so you've got um, a bunch of stops somewhere and they're close to your district boundary, if you like, your area boundary, sometimes the, the stops themselves will be closest to a locality which, are, which is owned by another administrative area. But as far as I'm aware, it, that if you if you do connect it to its nearest locality, it gets rejected in Napton because the stop is owned by West Yorkshire and the locality is owned by North Yorkshire. And I just wondered if that's still going to be an issue or whether that's going to be relaxed. Ah, so so this leads to an entirely separate question that Adrian once wanted me to ask, and I didn't know where I could fit it in. So you all have permissions to upload to only localities or ACTO codes that are allowed. So if you're for 040, 040, you can only upload to 040, you can't upload to 042 or any any other space, even though they might be next door. Now, do you still, is that tightness of permissions really valid? Is it inhibiting your work? And actually, I think because we we're going to talk about some homework. I hate to set you all homework because I feel like a teacher, but um, that might be something to get, to think about for next time and we'll come back and really dive deeply into what permissions make sense. Because um, cause I really want TFL or Transport for Greater Manchester here when we discuss this, because they look after things like tram stops, which can only be uploaded by DFT, but it doesn't make sense because they look after the physical infrastructure of the tram stops and it's creating extra work. So I really, really want to understand that permission structure that we need to get through and, and understand how that means. Does that make sense? Is that a sensible area to focus on? And if somebody wants to answer that, and John, I'll take your comments. Sorry, I work for Transport for Greater Manchester, so. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, John. <laughs> we would really like to have permission to upload onto the 940 data set, but only specifically for our Metrolink stops. Uh, and we think rules can be enacted to actually make sure you only do that. I think you're going to struggle when you're actually going into cross boundary stuff. It's slightly different rules then. And that's and that's something that I think I really want to start to unpack because I know this isn't just a simple binary thing. There's there's actually smart things that we need to think about. Um, and also around the missions, we need to think about how we verify you, how we know that you're you and not somebody pretending to be you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you want to have a separate conversation afterwards, we uh, we can tell you what we were thinking about, how we could set a rule up for us just to edit specifically Greater Manchester stuff. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I will take a note to set up a meeting, although you might note me not noting something down. So somebody <laughs> on the team will take a note for me that I remember to set up a meeting with you. Uh, Tim, you've got a you've got a comment and then we'll toddle along. Yeah, I mean, you, you've also got um, City on the call with Michael Muntis, who has a tram system um, as well. And there's there's more authorities that, that need access to um, national data sets in inverted commas than, uh, than I think are realised. Um, Thank you, Tim, because that, that's the point that I really wanted to dig down to. Michael, do you want to make a comment? Uh, not really. I think uh, Tim's made that clear. You know, the hour of the systems apart from just buses, you know, um, it gets even more complicated because we have a tram train system. So we have stops that are both tram and train. So there's that sophistication. <laughs> there's always one. <laughs> <laughs> the point of it is that 
we really ought to have people who are looking after the systems, updating the stuff in Naptown, whoever that might be and where they might sit and whatever type of transport that is. And I think that's certainly my aim. Um, and if people support that, then that'd be great. But I think that seems like a sensible position for us to be moving into rather than having somebody in DFT being a, an extra cog in a wheel, not adding any value. Yeah, and that, but and what that means is we need to dig down and understand, get into the nuts and bolts of this permissioning thing and really understand what it means. Tricia, you've got some thoughts. Yeah, I was just going to say that Nottinghamshire has a tram network as well. So we um, do the same with tram tram stops in Nottinghamshire. I love the fact that it's, I only know about the places where I've actually physically been, so I need to travel more of the country once we get out of lockdown and actually see see all of the different public transport possibilities around outside of London. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through the last of these and then we'll run on to the last two bits, which are much more just, I won't say talking at you, but passing on information. So we want the ability to compare with data sets such as postcodes, third party gazettes would be helpful. So is this making sure that you've got the right postcodes, you've got your localities within the right postcodes? Um, and is this also making sure with other gazettes, is this like the unique street referency thing as well? Uh, so it's a nod to that, but um quite often you find that uh, that an authority um, has local area definitions um, already that are used um, for other purposes in the council and at the moment you really can't well you, you have to jump through an awful lot of hoops and and do an awful lot of compares um, to, to make sure that, that the local areas match in uh, NIPTIG when compared to um, what you might use for you know, other purposes. I understand that. So that's um, a little bit like myself living in Chaucer Ward, which is kind of used for a few bits and pieces, but nobody really knows where Chaucer Ward is. Um, because, and it's used mostly as a boundary area, uh, as a local as a council boundary um but it's kind of understanding those things if if we suddenly had a center called the Chaucer Ward center or something people would be trying to come to it yep I gotcha yeah. I think I, I think I gotcha sorry I'm just trying to work through an example in my head to make sure that I I, I get the nuance um Chris you have a comment yeah I'll just caution against um aligning too very carefully with other um, databases, uh, locality databases, um, because uh, you don't want to get into the being forced into a line with sort of the political um, delineations. We've got examples of bus stops on one side of the road, they're in two different parishes. And of course, if we were to go with the parish register, um, we would have uh, quite faintly a ridiculous system, bearing in mind that they're on the edge of Didcot town. And of course, people are not going to look for a little village which is five miles behind you. Um, uh, mm -hmm. despite the fact that actually that's what the name of the parish is. It's called Didcot because that's where all the buildings are. I totally understand. I know that there's also a one in Blackpool by Blackpool Airport, I think it is, where the on one side of the street it's in one ACTO code and on the other side of the street it's the bus stops opposite or another ACTO code, but that's kind of the same thing but not quite as uh or potentially it's a complication that you could get if you went down to parishes all over the place um very quickly it's not often that i have to make changes or amendments to NUPTIG. the last time i made any changes when a very large housing development was built so we know that it's not done very often and then there's an interesting next one areas change over time so need to encourage regular reviews when you're talking regular, is this daily, weekly, monthly? Oh, yearly some... or something. Yearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. just, you know, that because they change, something needs to make sure that, that people are reviewing them rather than sat on them for um, ages. It would be very interesting to, to, to know how often different authorities update NIPTIC just as part of this because we know who's updated NAPTAN 
um, because that's available on the stats. But I don't think you can see that for Niptig. Somebody will correct me there, I'm sure. I'll, if we aren't publishing it, I'll see if we can get it. Um, we we sometimes don't have this information, or don't or don't have easy access to it. So we'll if we can't get it easy, we'll figure out how we can make it visible in the future. Um, and then somebody says it's underused and underappreciated, very much like Naptan as well. I think it's well Naptan's used a lot. I think it's not appreciated for the solid gold that it is for running everything on buses. So we've got uh, eight minutes left, so I'm going to do two things very quickly. I'm just going to talk about what's coming up. Um, and the things that um, we were going to look at showing probably in the next group, and we're going to try to run these maybe once every six weeks or so. We'll, we'll need to sit down and talk with Tim about how often we can run these and if these are providing value for you. Um, so coming up. We've got this. We'll bring a strategy for Naptan and Nubtig, what we're thinking about and what that looks like, and to get your feedback on some of that. Um, the longer term strategy as well. We also want to talk about the CSV files. Now, this is probably a little bit more for people who download and use it, but we know there's a whole pile of fields that have no data in them. We know that there's, and we want to find out what's the useful parts of the CSV file that you download and what's the not so useful parts are there parts that you just don't throw away as if if we're producing something and nobody's using it what is the value in producing it so we want to sit down and have a look through and really understand and we think we might need a special interest group for that because you know there's only a very small number of people who are going to be that caring about what's in the csv files and the other thing is, is just to know that we're going to be doing um, some more testing. We're going to be doing a lot more user testing over the coming weeks. And we want people who to let us know if they're interested in being part of that. Um, we're going to keep try to keep the sessions really short, really interesting. And we really, really appreciate the time that you give us because it gives us so much information that we can turn around. Just bear with me. Ian, you go while I run and answer my door. Okay, it's just a quick query, really, because it keeps getting quoted. Um, that was a, a forty percent Naptan, four percent error rate in Naptan from the Bods team. Is that being quantified, or is it being explained where they're coming up with the statistic? Because I know we undertook an exercise with KPMG for mm -hmm. the three areas that we manage, and there was nothing like four percent. In fact, there was maybe say we, if we said 60 out of 8,000 stops where we edited. Mm -hmm. So where is this 4% coming from uh, in order to justify everything that's going on at the moment? The 4% originally came from the work that Passenger did. Um, and it was originally a passenger calculation. But it I don't think that's a valid. Stuck. Yeah, that's not a valid calculation, though. So I think... Um... I think Mavis team are looking to do some work in the next few months um, to evaluate the success of the work that they did with KPMG. And I think they only looked at a couple of specific fields uh, looking at improving those rather than the data set. Um, so I think watch this space in, you know, oh, excuse me, <coughs> it's not COVID. Um, I, I think there's some work happening in that space to look at um, validating the four percent and looking at how uh, how how much uh, improvement was made in that work done by kpmg um i, I think sometimes it's a bit of an unhelpful stat really because it, it's not really i don't think it's been proved anywhere has it one way or the other that it is four percent no i don't think it has i mean if there's something coming back from feedback of whoever's using the buzz data now yeah that you can understand that but mm -hmm. other than that there's not a lot of feedback coming back from real-time systems or if you've imp if anybody's implemented a ticket system where they've got to align the stops onto first stages or any other ticket machine manufacturer who does that, you know we're not getting anything like that error rate. So um, yeah, I, I dispute that, or somebody needs to prove it. To be fair, mm. so Ian, it'd be really interesting maybe to sit down and have a chat about the error rate that you are seeing, and we can actually start to understand because that's going to be a much truer error rate by the sounds of it and just really start to 
um, unpack this narrative that the data is messy because I don't think it's useful because I think from what I've seen, Naptan data is solid gold in so many places and really, really great. And you, you will put so much effort into it. So it's hard to see you being berated at times f over a stat that somebody invented that's that that was come up or was generated how's how's that uh, a, a while ago um so in the last few minutes i just wanted to cover off who to contact um and we'll when we send the follow-up email we'll put our contacts in there so I, i'm doing all the stuff around these meetings i'm facilitating them um and trying to put them together and make them make sense Adrian Falconer, who's who's here, is the product owner for the rebuild of the Naptan project and service. So he's looking at the newer version. And Ursuline is the service owner who's looking at how we do anything on the current version and how we put the support together. Does that make sense of which one of us is the best one to talk to and um, will give out our email addresses and things like that so that you can get hold of us and ask for more information, volunteer to do some more stuff. And the other thing that we're possibly going to do is give you some homework. So we're going to send you the 131 rules and get your comments back on those. We'll find a way of doing that. Um, and th we'll, the next session of this, we will definitely be covering off this permissions question because we need to cover it off about then and we'll take some time to sit down and I'll think of ways of us unpacking how we verify how we know that you're you and not somebody pretending to be you but also what you should be allowed to do and what you shouldn't be allowed to do in the system and what you'd and not just based on what happens currently we want to know what what you'd like it to do and then we can have a look at how we how we fix, how we make that happen. Because the current system has some limitations because it had technical limitations at the time. Um, so is there any final comments from, from anyone before I thank you all for your time and your patience and your comments and feedback and everything that you've, that you've done today? I've got a question. Go for it. Um, hang on. Some colleagues in the West Midlands have been going through the existing ITO tests to find mm -hmm. out, to just to establish which ones they find valuable and which ones they don't. Now, where does that fit into what you're doing with these um, these these rules and the way you're proceeding? Um, if they if, would if, like it's, to... if it's redundant work, we won't bother. Um. If you'd like to give us, if you'd like to share that information, that would be really great. And that's what we'll do is we'll, we'll when we share out the, um, when we share out the rules, we'll give you space to put in your comments. We'll give space for people to say whether or not they think this is valid or not. I might actually, we'll find something really simple like people being able to give a rule a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and we'll just allow people to vote to vote on rules and to let us know whether those rules are really good or not. It, it, doesn't sound, comments in. it doesn't sound like duplication. It sounds like that's what we're hoping people will be able to do for us, I think. So it sounds great that somebody's looking at that already. Right, OK. Cool. If there's no other comments, I'm going to stop sharing my messy screen. Um, and I'm going to say, oh, Keith, sorry. Sorry, my only last question came in again. It was the ITO World tool because obviously you put around that it's going for six more months, but then that sounds like that's it. So where does it fit within your priorities to provide a tool which will do that for the local authorities? Because you've got obviously six months. So is that high on your list to do something like that standalone or is that not something you're looking to do? Um my question is, do we have to do it as a standalone tool or can it be part of the NAPTAN service? And this well, is something that I your, think... I... Sorry, that comes back to your timeline for actually doing the NAPTAN service and how that fits in. You know, is that going to be six months, one year, two years? So if it's a need that's been stated by the local authorities and you've got five more months before it goes away, does that need to come to the top of your list of what you're doing in this current project? Um, 
as standalone now, but which will be integrated in what comes in the future. So or will you look there, to extend I... the ITO World uh, contract again? Because once you've done it once, I assume you can do it again, whatever terms you've done. Uh, that I think is a question that we're possibly going to be able to answer when we when we talk about the NAPTAN and NAPTIG strategy. Um, Adrian, I'll let you also speak because I think you've got something to say there as well. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um... Sorry, every time I go to Adrian, he, he, he goes to speak and then immediately starts coughing. <laughs> I was trying to yeah. give him time to get the cough out the way. Yeah, sorry. Every time I think about coughing, or think about speaking, it makes me cough. Um, it's not COVID. The, we've just extended the ETA world contract, which we obviously we're really grateful that we were able to do, um, but we're still working out what that means in terms of long term um, consequences and, and, and implications and priorities. We're working on strategy at the moment um, for, for NAPTAN redevelopment um, and all, all those things need to be considered. So, yeah, I, we don't really know at the moment exactly what we'll be able to do with it. We need to figure it all out. Um, but obviously the clock's ticking and we're aware that there's six months isn't a long time. Um, so we will try and communicate with you once, we, once we've once we got a clearer plan on what we're going to do with that. But we don't have it at the moment. Okay. So um, given that it's just gone three minutes past, so thank you everybody for running a few minutes over. I've really appreciated your time, your feedback, your, your, your input. Um, we'll do as we did last time. Tim Rivett will send out the recording of this. I'll share the mural board of this as a PDF so you'll all be able to see that. Um, and we will also be sending out some homework. So what we'd like to do, and you can indicate to Tim if you don't want this, is we we'll, we will email the people from this from this group um, and give you some some extra information and some extra homework and try to share that out. Um, so if you don't want to be contacted by us, please, please let us know. But we're also aware um, that these are really, really valuable sessions for us, and I hope that they're valuable for you as well. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>